Hello, and welcome to our presentation on group theory and art. In this presentation, we will be covering how to use the abstract math concepts like symmetry and groups in order to form images like this tessellation made by the artist M.C. Escher. So let's start off with a mini art history lesson. This work is made by the artist M.C. Escher, who was a graphic artist and skilled printmaker. Escher is known for his optical illusions, and you might have seen his art on math, room, math classroom posters and on textbook covers. Although he didn't have a technical math background, Escher was fascinated by advance, advances in mathematics and it greatly influenced his art. Escher was also known for his creative tessellations. Tessellations are an arrangement of shapes that fit together in a way where they can repeat without gaps or overlapping shapes. He was inspired to make tessellations after studying Islamic mosaics, and then he decided to create his own shapes that resemble people or animals. But behind these tessellations, there is an underlying grid of polygons that repeat over the two-dimensional plane. Escher used math to change those base shapes into creatures like a bird or a lizard by reflecting or rotating pieces of the image. But in this presentation, we are going to focus on the math behind the different ways you can tile a two-dimensional plane. Now, to understand the math behind tessellations and wallpaper groups, we must first understand what is group theory. Group theory is a type of abstract algebra that deals with algebraic structures known as groups. A group is defined as some set G along with a binary operation that conforms to certain axioms. Now, groups are a very abstract concept in math and it's okay if you don't understand it immediately from this definition. That's what the next few slides are for. Sets and binary operations. A set is any collection of items, be it strings, matrices, shapes, etc. An example of which would be the complex numbers in the set below, one, negative one, i, and negative i. A binary operation is something that takes two elements from a set and combines them together in a well-defined way, be that addition, subtraction, etc. Here are a couple of examples of groups. So the first example is the set of all integers under the binary operation of addition. The second is the set of all two by two matrices under the op binary operation of component wise addition. And the third, which we explore further is the set of complex numbers under the binary operation of multiplication. What are axioms? An axiom is a logical statement that we assume to be true. There are four axioms that must be true to form a group. Those four axioms are closure, associativity, identity, and inverse. Closure is the axiom that states that if there are two items in a set, the, the, the binary operation between those two items is also in the set. For example, I and negative one combine by multiplication to form negative I, which is also in the complex number set. Associativity is the axiom that states that the order of operations does not matter. For example, negative one times I times negative I, where I and negative I are inside parentheses is the exact same thing as when negative one and I are in parentheses and multiplied by negative I. It's still negative one. The third axiom is identity. This axiom simply states that there must exist some identity element in a set. In a set using multiplication as its binary operation, that identity element would be one because one times any element is that element. But in addition, the identity element would be zero because zero plus any element is that element. And the last axiom is inverse. Inverse is the axiom that states that if there is an element in a set, there must also exist an inverse element that when combined together create the identity element. For example, negative two and two would combine to find, would add together to combine zero, the identity element under addition. Now, what is group theory actually used for? It's used for a lot more than what you might think. We're exploring tessellations and wallpapers, but it's also used for finding Rubik's cube solutions or chemistry, public key, public key cryptography, and knot theory.
So now that we've defined theory, we can start to apply it to wallpaper groups. Um, however, in order to do that, we first need to define symmetry um, as it's prevalent in all types of visual groups. Um, so symmetry is a transformation that pre preserves the object and the distance from a reference point, line, or plane. Um, when we think of symmetry, one of the most common images that can come to people's minds is that of a butterfly. And on the left, you can see that the left-hand side of the butterfly that's on the left of the blue line is the exact same as what is on the right-hand side of the butterfly. And um, they're exactly centered over that blue line. Um, now, when you look on the right, you can see what happens when that distance isn't preserved or that the object itself isn't preserved. What you end up seeing doesn't look quite right. Um, and that's mainly because symmetry isn't preserved. Um, so with this new definition of symmetry, there's more than what we commonly think of as reflection, um, as reflectional symmetry. Um, reflection is when you mirror something across a line um, and it is symmetric. But there's also translation, um, which is a linear movement along a line. There's rotational symmetry, which is um, rotation of any degree about a point. Um, you just need, like if you have n items, the degree that you are rotating would be 360 divided by n. Um, and then the last type of symmetry is a glide reflection. And a glide reflection is comprised of a reflection across a line plus a half unit translation. Um, so what this allows us to have is like feet walking along the beach would be a glide reflection um, as there's that negative space on each side of a foot. And if you were to have a full unit translation, you would just have translation plus reflection. Um, so with these different symmetry operations, we can start to define what are some symmetry groups. Um, when looking at point symmetry, there's two different types of operations that we can use. The first is rotation and the other is um, reflection. So when we just used rotation as our operation, um, we get cyclic groups, which are rotations of any um, positive integer numbers. So you can have a C3, you can have a cyclic group of order 100, et cetera. Um, the other type of point symmetry groups are dihedral groups, which are your symmetry groups of your regular polygons. Um, here we have the symmetry groups of both a triangle and a square shown. Um, and there's also an infinite number of these dihedral groups. So delving a bit deeper into what makes these symmetries a group, um, we can look at the dihedral group uh, four for a square. The set in this is not the square itself, but the operations that you can perform that preserve symmetry. Um, and then the binary operation in this group is subsequently applying these transformations, such as first rotating by 90 degrees and then performing a vertical reflection. Um, we can see that these axioms hold for this group. In closure, the application of two symmetry transformations results in another transformation, such as a ro rotation by 90 degrees followed by a rotation by 180 degrees gives you a rotation by 270 degrees. Um, associativity is also held here because um, by what our binary operation is, we are subsequently applying these actions. Um, the identity is uh, satisfied here as we have the rotation by zero degrees, which looks like the original element. And then the inverse is also true here, such as with a horizontal reflection, the inverse of that is itself. So a horizontal, you reflect horizontally once and then you do it again and you have the identity. Um, so Therefore, we know that uh, point symmetries are a thing, and now we can start to expand to get closer to wallpaper groups by moving into one dimension. Um, by moving into one dimension now, we can add in translations and glides um, as those happen along a line. And 
with you, we know in one dimension, we always need to have some sort of translation in order to fill the space. So that leaves us with four additional things that we can apply to our element. And those are a two degree rotation, um, a vertical reflection or horizontal reflection and a glide. Um, and as you can see here, um, we have seven different types of freeze groups that we can make out of these elements. So why aren't there more freeze groups, you might ask. Um, this is because with the series of transformations you can do to a pattern in one degree, um, some of the transformations will create patterns that are the same. So for instance, on the slide, you can see we have a translation and vertical reflection pattern. And this is the same as a translation, vertical reflection and glide, because as you can see by the green comma, the vertical reflection is the same place as where the glide ends up. So you wouldn't have to count that as part of the seven because it creates the same pattern. Okay, um, I skipped the slide. Um, so now that we see that freeze groups translate in one dimension, we can level up to wallpaper groups, which translate in two dimensions. And as you can see on this designer fabric, the logo um, extends in both the X and Y dimensions. So here they are. Here are the 17 different kinds of wallpaper groups where you can repeat a pattern in two dimensions. All of these groups have a notation that describes what's happening in the pattern. And these can be these notations are two to four letters and numbers. This slide is a lot of information at once. So I'm going to walk through some of what's going on with the wallpaper group labeling notation. First, I have highlighted all the or some of the wallpaper groups that have a number in them. Uh, this number represents rotational fold symmetry. Uh, there are more uh, groups that have rotational fold symmetry than the ones I have highlighted, but these are just the ones I'm going to go over in the presentation. The rest are in our supplemental documents. So here you can see our rotational fo fold notation. Um, for example, in uh, P4, you can see how each point of rotational symmetry has a triangle every 90 degrees, and there, that makes there to be four of them, which is why it's labeled P4. Next, we have our mirror classification. So if the notation has an M in it, it means it has in either a vertical or horizontal reflection lines. And you can see that here, there are two kinds of centering. Um, you can either have it where it's primitive cell translation and the uh, shape itself is centered or centered cell translation where if you drew a box around four elements, the there will be a item in the center of those four sets of triangles as well. For glide reflection notation, um, this occurs when there is a G in the notation. Uh, you can see here, um, if there is one reflection, the triangle reflects over this dashed green line. And if there are two reflections, um, the first reflection is over the horizontal dashed green line and the second reflection you can see in this larger red box um, reflects that first reflection over a vertical um, glide reflection line. Um, there are more wallpaper groups and we go into that in the supplemental documents. So it may be a little bit surprising to hear that there's only 17 wallpaper groups because you can go out and see an infinite number of different ways of patterning different items um, that you see. So the way that you get that is by how you choose your base pattern. Um, so here we have a base pattern that's been chosen and then we're gonna walk through how to make a P4M wallpaper. And uh, as Raquel described, a P4M uh, is going to be something that has a four fold rotational symmetry plus a mirror. Um, so to do this, we take our base pattern and we're going to mirror it 
Um, so now that we've muted horizontally, we can now start to rotate it around to get um, the fourfold symmetry or the fourfold rotational symmetry. And now that we have this, we can um, translate it both vertically and horizontally until we fill the page. Um, and now you have a wallpaper group. Or now you have a P4M wallpaper. And as you can see here, um, some art that we created, uh, this is what you get when you choose different um, base elements. And this is, these are all P, these are both P4Ms. Um, however, they look different because there's a different base cell structure. And now if we have any extra time, um, we're gonna drop a link in the chat to a way to make your own wallpaper designs. Uh, so thank you for coming to our presentation and we hope you enjoy uh, making some art. <laughs>